Please pray with me. May these words that I speak be grounded in my soul, encouraged by the God presence in me. And may these words that you hear be captured by your soul, enlivened by the God presence in you. Amen. The Christian story, the story of Jesus, is called the story of good news. The question that still needs to be asked is, what exactly is the good news? Is the good news found in the physical resurrection of Jesus? Is the good news found in the promise of life after death? Is the good news found in God's redemption, the resuscitation of Jesus after letting him die an agonizing death? The problem for me is that any of this good news requires me to believe in something. It is an act of the head, of thinking our way to an answer. Good news that requires me to believe in this way is also good news that leads to doubt, because the evidence is not based in any kind of reality. I personally need good news that is grounded deeply in reality, grounded in the way of the unfolding universe. The good news for me, the good news of the Christian story, is based on the reality of love as the underlying mystery at the heart of the universe, at the heart of all of life. It is love. This love is for me the very presence of God. The good news of the gospel story is that love cannot be destroyed, no matter how hard we or anyone else tries. Love cannot be destroyed. And the good news of Easter did not happen in the hours and days after his death. They were pretty sad, pretty despondent, despairing. No, it happened in the weeks, months, and years that followed. The story that I told the children this morning was written almost a hundred years after Jesus' death. It's looking back. And in the story, this awakening is, sh is shown as Mary's awakening to the, presence, to the presence of radical love in her own being when she realizes that the spirit of Jesus continues to be present and alive, even though Jesus is physically not present. The good news is that love, the essence and the heart of the spirit of God, was and is always victorious over death. Even the painful, agonizing, brutal death of crucifixion. Richard Rohr calls this God's most distressing disguise. I love that notion. And he says this, in Jesus we have an almost extreme example of the God presence. It starts as a homeless baby in a poor family, then a refugee in a foreign country, then an invisible carpenter in his own country, which is colonized and occupied by an imperial power, ending as a criminal accused and tortured by heads of both systems of power, temple and empire, abandoned by most of his inner circle, subjected to the death penalty by a most bizarre and humiliating public ritual, and finally buried quickly in an unmarked grave. Surely this message is intended to be subversive, clear, and unavoidable. And Rohr goes on to say, Yet we largely made Jesus into a churchy icon that any priestly or policing establishment could gather around without even blushing. Ilya Dilio, a Franciscan scientist and theologian, 
challenges us to take the scandal and the downward movement of the incarnation in Jesus, the presence of the holy in Jesus, to take that quite seriously and to let it rearrange our priorities. He says, an incarnation bias is evident today in our globalized culture. The problem of immigrants, welfare recipients, incarcerated, mentally ill, disabled, and all who are marginalized by mainstream society is a problem of the incarnation. When we reject our relatedness to the poor, the weak, the simple, and the unlovable, we define the family of creation over and against God. In place of God, we decide who is worthy of our attention and who can be rejected. Because of our deep fears, we spend time and attention and money on preserving our boundaries of privacy and increasing our knowledge and power. We hermetically seal ourselves off from the undesired other, the stranger, and in doing so, we seal ourselves off from the Spirit of God. By rejecting God in the neighbor, we reject the love that heals us. And so Rohr continues, until, until we come to accept created reality with all its limits and pains as the living presence of God, Christianity has nothing to offer the world. Nothing. It is sound bites of empty promises. When we lose the priority of love in weak, fragile humanity, we lose the Christ. The foundation on which we stand as Christians. Compassion, love, continues the incarnation by allowing the God presence to take root in us, to be enfleshed in us. The incarnation is not finished in Jesus. It is not yet complete, for it is to be completed in us. This, for me, is the heart of the good news. And it can only become good news for us when we become willing to let the omnipotent being God die again. The God that we continue to sing and pray to, even though this controlling, all-knowing God died that first Easter. Died. Because Jesus' followers realized that there was no God out there to save Jesus. There was no God out there to save them. For God was in Jesus. And God was in each of them. Living at the heart of every life. Not suspended somehow away from life. But we won't let that God out there go. For 2,000 years, we have continued to cling to and believe in that God. It is the God of our traditional Lord's Prayer that might give us bread, that might forgive us, that might deliver us or not. We desperately need to let go of that God, to let that God die, so that the God presence in us, in all of reality, just like the God presence in Jesus, can live in us, making us expressions of the good news rather than just believers that good news happened once 2,000 years ago. Peter Rollins says it best, he said, we need to change completely our understanding of God from God as that which you love to God is what you experience in the act of love. This is not heresy, my friends. This is rather a reclaiming of the message, the good news of that first Easter, the good news of Paul, to the fledgling communities of the first century before religion robbed us of love. 
the good news is right before our eyes because it's written on our hearts. We know this. The good news, the way of Jesus, what he lived for, what he was willing to die for, is symbolized in the empty tomb. And it is that in Easter, love is risen. May it be so. Thank mm -hmm. you.